This is a 2015.5 Volvo V60 T5 Drive E Platinum. Quite a mouthful, I know. Six years ago, this thing sold for north of $50,000. Now you can pick up a fairly low mileage, well optioned one for around 20 grand. Let's put it through its paces and see whether or not this is a used car bargain and if it's worth your money. Before we get started with the review, I'd like to give a huge shout out to my buddy Theo from at I'll Draw Your Sob on Instagram for letting me review his new ride, which is in pristine condition, and it only has 46,000 miles. We actually road tripped up there to San Jose together to pick up this car and drive it back to LA. Uh, you should definitely check out his page, give him a follow. He does some amazing car art, uh, so if you want a custom drawing of your car that you can frame or give to somebody, uh, definitely hit him up. I'll leave his information in the description description down below. Uh, anyway, with that out of the way, let's get right into the review. So this is a luxury wagon first and foremost, so let's take a look at the interior. The V60's interior is actually pretty well equipped for its age. Since this was designed back in the early 2010s, of course it looks a bit dated, but it's comfortable and gets the job done. Everything in here feels very well built and high quality, from the leather seats to the buttons and the gear shifter. In terms of tech, we have a cool looking semi-digital gauge cluster and a 7 inch center screen that has navigation, Bluetooth audio, and even a web browser. Obviously there's no Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, but these weren't even out when this car was made. Volvos are also known for being very, very safe, and this car is no exception. It has all the modern safety features you'd expect, including adaptive cruise control, automatic emergency braking, lane keep assist, rear cross traffic alert, automatic high beams, and much, much more. I will say that the backup camera is not very good though. Overall, it's a great place to spend time. So as a family station wagon, you'd expect this car to have really good back seat legroom. And I'm happy to report that it does. I'm five foot seven, I have ample rear seat legroom. I'd be happy sitting back here for a couple hours on a long road trip. So one of the most hilarious quirks I found with the V60 is how you can remotely drop the rear seat headrest even if someone is sitting in the seat. So let's say you have a really annoying passenger who keeps bothering you, you're on a long road trip and you want them to just be quiet. Well, say no more, this car has got you covered as we shall now demonstrate. Hey Theo, sobs really aren't that great. Oh, come on. Come on, man. Shut the f*** up. So being a station wagon, this car is expected to have really good cargo room. And luckily, the Volvo V60 does not disappoint. It boasts 43.1 cubic feet of storage with the seats folded down. That's good enough for a big Costco run, some suitcases, maybe even some golf clubs. You can even camp in here if you wanted to because the seats fold down completely flat. Another thing I liked about the trunk is this handy grocery divider. So you could throw your groceries back Back here and throw something else right here and your groceries won't like roll around and follow all over your trunk when you are driving around. The one thing I didn't like however is the lack of a power tailgate. Now this wasn't an option on any one of the V60s in 2015. Now this car has a really really heavy tailgate. It's built really well so when you close it it's it's super heavy, super hard to close. So I really wish Volvo would have at least added that as an option. So under the hood we have Volvo's T5 Drive E motor. Now on like the name sounds, it's not electric and it's not hybrid. It is a two liter inline four cylinder turbocharged producing 240 horsepower, 258 pound feet of torque that's sent to the front wheels through an eight speed automatic transmission. That's good for a zero to 60 time of about 6.2 seconds. This car actually gets pretty good gas mileage, 25 city, 37 on the highway for a combine of 29 and it drinks regular unleaded fuel, which is pretty uncommon for luxury cars. Uh, so you'll save a little bit on fuel there. Uh, one of the cool quirks I found uh, about the engine bay is that this engine cover is squishy. Uh, that's the first time I've seen this on a car. I think it's a Volvo thing, but I imagine this for some sort of sound deadening or vibration reduction or maybe even some per pedestrian protection, like if you hit a pedestrian and the engine um, will hit them and you know 
they get hurt. But if it's squishy, then you can reduce the impact a little bit. Anyway, now let's talk about Volvo's engine lineup, which is quite confusing, and then we'll go for a ride. So for the US market, Volvo offered this car with four different engine options. There was the original Volvo engines, and then the new Drive E architecture, which are still being used in today's Volvos. So the original T5 had a 2.5 liter, five cylinder turbo, and the original T6 had a three liter straight six turbo. Uh, the Drive E T5 had a two liter turbo four, which is what we have here, and the Drive E T6 had a two liter turbo and supercharged four cylinder, which produces more power. Up until 2017, the Drive E motors were only offered with front wheel drive, and then in 2017 and after, we got the Haldex all wheel drive system offered in today's Volvos. I know that was quite a mouthful, but now let's go for a drive. Okay, so we are driving the V60 T5 Drive E Platinum. I'm here with the owner, Theo, and he is going to uh, help me out with this uh, driving commentary, give me a little bit of a deeper perspective in, uh, into the ownership, what it's like to drive this thing every day. So the first thing I noticed about this car is that the uh, uh, road noise and the, um, the road feeling, so like the suspension, is a little bit more rough than I would have thought. Um, so originally, I, this is a, this, I thought this is a Volvo station wagon. You know, it's going to be a little bit more removed from the road. Uh, it's going to be smoother. It's going to be, um, you know, kind of more like, like I would think, like maybe a Mercedes C class. More or, luxurious, yeah. definitely. Yeah. You know, this is not the sport model. This doesn't. This is not the Polestar, and this doesn't even have the sport package. Like these are the the comfort seats, and these are the smallest wheels they offered. And I agree with you. It is. It's not uncomfortably firm, but, but it's way firmer than I thought it would be. Right, yeah, definitely. And again, that's not a bad thing. Uh, I wouldn't call it hyper intrusive or hyper annoying or anything like that. And I, it's definitely nothing to really worry about, but it's something unexpected, uh, you know, I would, I would have thought from a uh, Volvo station wagon, um, you know, but Overall, I mean, this is a, from, from what I've noticed so far, this is actually a really, really great driving car. I mean, the steering is very, very light and very, you know, you know, it's not wafty at all. You know, the car, you know, of course, doesn't handle like, like a sports car. This is a Volvo station wagon after all. But, you know, the steering isn't like a lot of SUVs where you can literally point them, like you can move the steering wheel two inches and the car doesn't do anything. And so. I think that that also is due to this being a car and not an SUV, right? Right, right. Because you, you really have physics working on your side. These are a lot smaller tires, a lot smaller wheels. The ride height is a lot lower and so is the center of gravity. So right. you're you're kind of not combating all the um, all the physical challenges of an SUV. So that definitely helps with, with uh, driving dynamics. Drivability every day, you know, this thing is, you know, handles just fine. Um, you know, it's not gonna knock your socks off, obviously. If you want that, get like a Polestar, which is much, much more expensive than this car. Or even get one with the Sport Package. Right, the Sport right. Package came with a strut bar, bigger wheels, maybe bigger brakes, sports seats, yeah. and a sports steering wheel. Right, right. So so, so get that if you want a little bit more handling prowess in your V60, but this luxury package platinum um, model is made, made for mainly comfort, not sport. And it is plenty comfortable. For very, very ways. comfortable. A lot of luxury cars these days, I think every Volvo now these days has a digital gauge cluster, but remember this car was made back in 2015, and even today, when every car has one, this gauge cluster still looks super cool and super new and like like the next big thing. We got this like, they got the circle that kind of mimics the old analog gauge border and then, but it's all digital and then these two like flanked, uh, these digital screens that are small that flank the two sides and you can customize them. We have it on the Sport one right now. That's my favorite. Um, I think your favorite is the Comfort one, right? It's called Elegance, Elegance. but uh, definitely my favorite. It works the best with the adaptive cruise control. And I mean, the screen, it, it really doesn't look that dated today. Even what, six years old? Yeah, this is a six year old car. So I imagine when this came out in 2015, this was like super, super cool. And like everyone thought this was like the, the, the next big thing. Um, but even today, this thing is, 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 I think it's really awesome. And it even, it shows you the speed limit um, of the road that you're on. 
next there, uh, next to the uh, little picture of the car that shows the adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist status, uh, engine oil temperature. And also the, the Pro Park Pilot Assist, whatever it's called. Oh, yeah. Parallel parking assist. Yeah, the parallel parking assist. This car does park itself, which is pretty handy if you're driving this thing around the city. Um, but yeah, everything you need is displayed on the gauge cluster. One thing to mention is that the TFT cluster, which is what this is called, is not standard. Um, it might be standard on like the higher trims, like the Platinum, but I know that on the Premier and on the Premier Plus even maybe, um, you can get a tiny little LCD with a with an analog tachometer and speedometer, believe it or not. And those cars date really quickly. Right. I looked at one before looking at this and it was an automatic no for me, just because of the gauge cluster. Right, right. I mean, this interior, even though it's functional and everything, it is starting to look a little bit dated. I mean, I believe this body style came out, everything came out in like 2011, 2012, and you can definitely see the uh, 2012 aspects of this interior. You know, the recessed screen, it's a little bit smaller. You got these, this number pad um, right here, um, this physical number pad, and then a, lo a lot uh, less efficient use of space. Um, but overall, I mean, this is a very nice interior. It has all the features that you might need. Of course. Right? It right. has, which is, it's part of the reason why the price is so low, to be completely honest, right? People are looking towards the new ginormous Tesla style infotainment screens where this one does basically everything you need. It has a web browser and, and Wi Fi connectivity. There are apps you can download that hook up to your phone. It has navigation, of course, and Bluetooth and, and, um, the only issue is it looks really dated. Okay, we are going to test out the V60 T5 Drive Ease acceleration. I'm on a freeway on ramp where I have to just accelerate immediately. So here we go. Oops, broke the wheels loose a little bit there. Okay, there's 60 miles an hour, uh, just a little past 60. Um, not slow. Uh, I wouldn't call it fast, but uh, this thing definitely, you know, you'll get up to 60 just fine. Um, you know, it was very smooth on the freeway. I, I like that a lot. Um, like I was saying before, uh, a little bit more road noise and a little bit uh, more um, road feeling than I would have expected. Not a bad thing, but uh, just something that um, was a little bit unexpected when I drove this car. Um, but overall, on the freeway, this car is actually really, really nice. Um, what's your favorite part about driving this car on the freeway? Oh, the adaptive cruise control, by far. Oh, yeah. It is so nice, especially in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, to just set the adaptive cruise and just babysit it, rather than going, brake gas, brake gas, brake gas. The one really irritating thing is that the auto start-stop is not canceled when the adaptive cruise control is on. So sometimes, in stop-and-go traffic, the auto start-stop will happen, which is really disconcerting, having your car shut off in the middle of traffic. Yeah, and then when it turns back on, but I noticed that it, it they didn't execute it that well. It like really shakes up the car. It's, you, it's pretty jerky, definitely. Yeah, yeah, so if, if you drive this car around, I definitely turn that off. I usually turn off auto start stop on basically every car I drive because I really don't think any manufacturer, even Mercedes, um, even the most high end the luxury car brands have really mastered our uh, auto start stop. But uh, overall on the freeway, this car is really nice. So what's the verdict on the Volvo V60? Well, this is a lot of car for 20 grand. Obviously, you're gonna pay a little bit more in maintenance down the road because this is a luxury car, but think about what you're getting. It's safe, it's practical, it's stylish, and it's luxurious, all for the price of a brand new base model Nissan Sentra. Sounds like a great deal to me. If you like what this car has to offer, but you don't need or want a wagon, you should definitely consider the Volvo S60 of this model year. It's basically this exact car in sedan form. They're also much easier to find, and they're a lot cheaper than the V60, so it's seriously something to consider if you're in the market for a use Volvo. Well guys, that is going to do it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it informative. Again, I'd like to give a big thank you to Theo from at I'll Draw Your Sob on Instagram. Definitely go check out his page. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.